So it is, Imran, if you can bear it, the thought of it, with huge, enormous pleasure, and looking out all over this, um, this great arena, um, 500 people are now going to cling, astonishingly, to every word <laughs> you say. So can I introduce Imran Khan? Thank you, Johnny. <laughs> Johnny mentioned that uh, I'm under a lot of pressure because of various speakers who, who uh, uh, delivered lectures before me. But Johnny should know that I learned to play under pressure because I was, he was my captain. <laughs> But not that he was a captain. He is the most eccentric cricketer I have ever known. <laughs> you don't know what it was like playing under him. It was the most incredible experience. Um, but I have to say that I learned something very important uh, while playing under him. Um, his captaincy was always trying to challenge the team. Before him, the county captains which I had met or played under always played to save the game. The priority was not to lose. Johnny was the first county cricket captain I played who played to win. Big difference when you go into a game playing, to, playing not to lose means a different strategy, different team selection. When you go into play to win, it's a completely different strategy, attitude, team selection. So that's one thing I have to say. And yes, learn to play under pressure under you, Johnny. Now, the spirit of the game. I think the first thing which, um, where I will differ with Johnny is about how, in order to keep up the spirit of the game, what is the most essential feature in it? In my opinion, it is fairness. You must win the match fairly. So when I was playing, I was the first captain who started talking about neutral umpires. And I remember getting a lot of flack for it. People would, you know, there would be a lot of criticism that this is not with the spirit of the game. This is against cricket tradition. Johnny's very traditionalist. And I'll soon say, uh, go on to say how we differ there too about various things that have come up. But I always thought that a match must be won fairly and squarely. And in order to do so, you must have umpires, which both teams have faith in. So we used to have this situation in Pakistan. Foreign teams coming in. We would win the matches. But the credit would not go to the team. It would go to the umpires. <clears throat> and we would come to England. And we would, we would think that marginal decisions were going against us. So we would complain about the umpiring. And we would be told, English umpires make mistakes. But Pakistani umpires cheat. <laughs> so that's where... It, so that's where the idea of neutral umpire started. I thought, well, there's only one way to play the game uh, in a fairer way. But this was a long struggle because it wasn't easy. There was a great amount of resistance to neutral umpires. And <clears throat> the spirit of the game suffered when I was playing. I saw incredible instances. I mean, you don't see those things anymore in, in, uh, on the cricket field. I remember once where the West Indies were playing uh, New Zealand. This is early 81. Eight, uh, 81 or 80 or something like that. And I remember six foot eight inches Colin Croft running into bowl. 
By this time, the West Indies had lost complete trust in the New Zealand umpires. And I remember he ran into bowl, and rather than we were watching on television, rather than watching him deliver the ball, we suddenly saw the umpire flying 10 yards away. <laughs> He'd hit the umpire. And then, of course, holding, there was this famous picture of him kicking a stump out. So there was a lot of acrimony in the game. Uh, it was bad most of the time, but when Pakistan played India, it deteriorated to depths you cannot imagine. <laughs> Losing against India in Pakistan was not an option. <laughs> and same in India, for India to let Pakistan win wasn't an option. So whenever the teams were doing badly, they could always rely on the umpires. <laughs> So, Pakistan never won in India. India never won in Pakistan. Such straight as that. Anyway, here was I. I led this tour to India in 1987. Indian preparing home conditions, wicket for their own spinners. So, we had our strength in fast bowling. Now, first four matches, all drawn matches because the wickets were spinners, but they were so slow that there couldn't be any result. Fifth test match. India produced in Bangalore one of the most spinning wickets I've ever seen. It was from day, uh, we started off, we tried fast bowlers one over each, and then the spinners came along. And I have never seen a spinning wicket like that. Pakistan bowled out for 118. India bowled out for 140. Despite home umpires. <laughs> Pakistan then make, give India set a total all the team fights right down to the end, and we give set India a total of about 220, something like that. Now, India are losing wickets regularly as they are chasing this total. And we have a pack of fielders around the bat. Every over, there are minimum of three appeals. So, the, so and we reach a point where between us and the first ever series win in India is one man, Suryal Gavaskar. He's now playing this incredible innings, and our fielders think they've got him out at least three times by then. <laughs> but anyway, the, the trust between our, our team and the umpire, Indian umpires had completely broken down. So now, I'm, now imagine this scenario. Here's this match. I'm, I'm now imagining in my mind the next day headlines, Pakistan team win the first ever test series in India. I'm already picturing the, the glory. But as, I, as this Sunil Gavaskar's batting is making them creep nearer and nearer the total, I'm watching the faces of the pack round the, the bat. And they first, the first this, they just made loud appeals. And the appeals went on and on. Then they would make, they would rush about two yards towards the umpire and then stop appealing. Then they would go about five yards. When they started crossing the halfway wicket, I changed my position. Now I'm standing at mid wicket, so I start moving in towards shortish uh, mid on. My now, I, I had seized, now I'm no longer thinking. As they are now rushing towards the umpire, led by none other than Javed Miyadad. <laughs> and I can tell you, I still remember the expression on his face when he was charging towards the umpire, led by the pack. I would imagine, you know, that's what a, a suicide bomber must look like before he explodes himself. <laughs> When they, when they reached three quarters, you know, there was only three, four yards left between them and the umpire. I then had to make a rush in between and stop these fielders from attacking the umpire. Now my, my, my mind now had changed. From now envisaging the next day's headline of first ever series win, my mind now, I seriously started thinking, Indian umpire murdered on a cricket field. <laughs> in the first ever act of cross-border terrorism. <laughs>